All right, Cowboy Joe here with a recapitulation of section 14.10 on periodic motion. And your goal by the end of this video lecture will be to describe the force in an elastic spring. Calculate the force and energy stored in an elastic spring and calculate the period and length of a pendulum. So we have three different types of waves that we can talk about. One is electromagnetic waves matter waves and these two types here we can't really get our hands on we can't get our hands on to measure anything or um collect data on but mechanical waves we can so let's start with the kind that we can't electromagnetic waves i like to remember all these waves by remembering the sentence red martians invaded venus using x-ray guns radio waves microwaves infrared visible light ultraviolet x-ray and gamma rays are the examples of the electromagnetic waves and these do not require any material medium for its propagation and they can even travel through a vacuum electromagnetic waves are caused due to varying electric and magnetic fields the other type of wave that i'd like to talk about are the waves produced in electrons and in particles so these waves are produced by the electrons and we can't really get our hands on these guys either but we can get our hands on and measure some different things on mechanical waves not all mechanical waves but these types of waves act as the propagation of a disturbance through a material medium sound waves are an example water waves even waves through a rope would be an example of mechanical waves the material medium that it's talking about is the thing that the object is traveling through so sound waves travel through the air water waves travel through water and this wave through a rope travels through the rope so they are caused by the repeated periodic motion of the particles of the medium in which the disturbance is handed over from one particle to the next and two examples here that i have to represent mechanical waves something that repeats its pattern is a pendulum and a spring if you put a weight on a spring pull it down and let it go back and forth they'll do the same thing over and over and over again so motions that repeat in a regular cycle are examples of periodic motion now if you look at the pendulum if you just let that go the force of gravity and air friction will slow its motion down till it stops moving and that's what we call damped harmonic motion but if there's a restoring force on the object so that that object goes back to the same distance we call that simple harmonic motion if you provide a greater force to the object and this object swings a greater distance each time then we call that resonance and that's sort of what happened to the tacoma bridge this bridge started to sway in the wind and the wind kept matching the frequency of the sway making a sway bigger and bigger and bigger until it collapsed so um there are some things that we can measure on a pendulum one would be the period and the period is given the symbol capital t and is the time needed for an object to repeat one complete cycle so if we started our stopwatches now and to and fro now that would be a period a period is the time it takes to complete one cycle now the amplitude of the motion is a measurement of distance from its equilibrium position to its highest point so that distance is what we call the amplitude hooke's law states that a force exerted by a spring is directly proportional to the amount that it is stretched so if i put an object like this ball on that spring, it'll pull it down. So it'll pull it down to the point where it stops and balances again. So he said this F, this force, this would be the weight uh, put on this spring. And this X is the distance that the spring stretched. So what's K? Well, K is what we call a spring constant. And a spring constant is a characteristic of a spring that tells us the properties of a spring, like how stiff it is. So what we could do is collect data. 
we can put a certain mass on and figure out how much it stretches. Then put another mass on, figure out how much it stretches, put another one on. And if we measure that weight versus stretch, we could produce a graph and it'll be a linear relationship for Hooke's law on an elastic spring. So what force was used to stretch the spring 0.4 meters? Well, meters is down here on a horizontal axis. So 0.4 goes straight up, looks like two and a half newtons. And we can also answer questions, how far did the spring stretch with a four newton weight? Well, newtons are on the vertical. So we gotta go up to four, go over to the graph. It's right before the 0.6, we can go 0.58 meters. But we can also go also, but we can also ask questions like, what is a slope? Well, what does the slope represent on this graph? Well, the slope units would be newtons over meters. And that's actually the unit for the spring constant, that characteristic of a spring that tells you how stiff the object is. So the spring constant is found by taking the rise over the run, or the slope of this line is produced. So what is the spring constant for this data? Take maybe this triangle right here. This would be nine newtons high divided by 1.2 meters wide. So rise over run, one, uh, nine divided by 1.2 gives us about seven and a half newtons per meter. And that would be the spring constant of this spring. So there's one more thing we can try to figure out on graphs. It's the area under the curve. So if we figured out the units maybe first to give us a hint, the area would be hat. There's a triangle. This is going to produce a triangle. If we shade it in a region, maybe up to one, it would be a triangle. And this triangle has an area formula equal to one half times the base times the height. So if we took one half times meters times newtons, we'd get a newton meter. And a newton meter is a unit for energy. So what do you think this represents? This is the energy of a spring, the potential energy of the spring. And it's found by taking one half the base times the height or one half of Fx, one half of the force times the stretching distance. Now we know that F equals Kx and we can replace this F in the formula with Kx and come up with another equation for the potential energy to be one half of Kx squared. So either formula can be used to calculate the potential energy. So now we do have that fourth question down here that we can ask on a graph of force versus stretch when it's talking about a spring. How much energy is stored in a spring that is stretched 1.2 meters? So here's 0.8, this is one, that's must be 1.2 here clean to the end. So we're going up to the nine. So we got nine for the rise. Well, we're calculating area under the curve. So we're gonna be going one half the base times the height, one half of 1.2 times nine gives us 5.4 Newton meters. So it has 5.4 joules, another unit for newton meter, remember, is a joule. Well, 5.4 joules of energy stored in that spring. So now let's answer some questions, some springs practice problems. How much force is necessary to stretch a spring with a certain spring constant? Well, this guy right here, newton slash meters, is your K. And this is your X, and it's asking for F. So this is a matter of substitution to get your answer. So a spring has a constant, that would be your K, how far, that's your X, will stretch when a block weighing that's hung from it. So again, the Newton number is given and the K number is given. So 18 divided by 56 will give us our answer. So let's look at another one, a spring with a spring constant. Another K is given, is compressed by a distance of this, that's your, make sure it's in meters, 0.165. How much potential energy, this one's asking for potential energy, given the K and the X, we wanna use one half KX squared. Put your K in there, put your X in there, and uh, just multiply across there. We get 1.96 joules. Let's look at one more. A spring stretched by, that's your X, the stretch is at 0.18 meters, bag of potatoes weighing 56, that's your F. How much potential energy, elastic potential energy is stored in a spring when it's stretched this far? Well, given the F and the X, we want to use the other formula for PE, one half FX. 
Put the 56 in there and put the 0.18 in and multiply across, we get 5.0 joules. So let's say the same force is applied to two different springs. If the first spring displaces to one centimeter and the second spring displaces to three, what can you say about the spring constant? Well, remember that these spring constants are characteristics of the spring that tell you how tells you how hard it is to stretch a spring. So if one only went one, that means it's a little stiffer. If one went three with the same weight, then it's not as stiff. So the one that didn't stretch as much is a higher spring constant. All right, so let's focus on the pendulum again. A simple pendulum consists of a massive, a massive object called the bob suspended by a string or light rod of length L. So now we can measure the period of a pendulum with this formula. The L in this formula represents the length. The length is measured from the pivot point down to and including half of the bob. And this G is 9.8 here on Earth and 2 pi pi is 3.14159, don't forget that's a button. And T, capital T, is your period measured in seconds. Sticking with SI units, you wanna measure your length in meters, and you'll get seconds. Now this formula can be manipulated a little bit so that we can ask questions like what's the period, but also what's the length and what's even gravity? Maybe we uh, switch planets on you. So if we divide each side by 2 pi and then square both sides, we end up with this formula, and I like this relationship better when we're working with pendulums. Let me show you. What is the period on Earth? Earth is needed of a pendulum with a length one. So looking at this, we put in uh, the one in for the L, and we put in 9.8 for here on Earth, and we can go straight to our calculator and calculate the answer. So we're gonna be taking this length that one times four times pi squared divided by 9.8 and then square root your answer and we should end up with two second period on this it's just like a grandfather clock right here must be one meter in length for a grandfather clock the the time it takes to go to and fro is a second apiece so let's look at another one how long must the pendulum be on the moon to create a period of two seconds. Now, if it was to create, if we were to create a clock on the moon, we would need it to go to and fro in two seconds with a gravity of 1.6. So we would need to know how long should the length of the pendulum be. So we're gonna be putting two in for the capital T, nah, not 9.8 here for the moon, but 1.6. So we're gonna take two squared times 9.8 divided by four divided by pi squared, and that'll give us our length of 0.16. So 16 centimeters, if you're ever on the moon and you wanted to make a clock, you need 16 centimeter string and a bob, and you could create a clock. All right, let's look at one more pendulum with a length. 36.9 centimeters has a period of this. So we're given that length, we're given the period, and the question says, what is the acceleration due to gravity? Maybe uh, you got knocked out, you don't know where you're going, and you have to figure out what planet you're on or something like that, maybe. Um, so you're gonna have to solve for gravity. So G is right here, the length is given to be 0 0.369, T is 1.2, so you take that 0 0.369 times four times pi squared divided by 1.22 squared, and we get our answer. Hey, it just so happens, it looks like we're on Earth. 9.79 meters per second squared. All right, so that's it, folks. Um, we talked about the types of waves, electromagnetic, matter, and mechanical. And remember these first two, we really can't get our hands on to uh, collect data on, measure and mess with and learn more about waves, but the mechanical waves we can. The pendulum, for example, and the spring, we can get our hands on and measure different properties of waves. So we define simple harmonic motion, damped and resonance. And we uh, talked about amplitude, frequency and period. 
Now we have two different formulas here, one for springs, one for uh, pendulum. Remember the spring has a spring constant in this formula for Hooke's law, F equals KX. And we have two formulas for potential energy, one half KX squared, one half FX. And finally our pendulum relationship here, our pendulum formula says the period squared divided by four pi squared equals the length divided by gravity. So that's it folks, Cowboy Joe is out.